Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, channeling in the Texo Instruments. Today we're actually going to be showing you how to properly size and put on a complete arc flash coat and bibber overall style suit. First, you have to make sure that you adjust your suspenders here that are actually uh, suited for the actual bib overall. First, you'll step into your bib overalls by placing one foot first. And then what you want to do is you want to hook the pile straps at the bottom of the actual overalls to make sure that they are uh, properly fitted around your ankles and your shoes. Then what you'll actually do is you have to connect your suspenders here, avoiding any slack in the distance between your daily, your daily wear, and uh, your arc flash suit. Then what you'll do is you'll adjust your hook and power strap here which are the actual velcro straps that you have on the actual uh, feet of your bib overalls along with the sidings of the the waistband. So what you want to do is just to make sure that you adjust those to make sure that it fits uh, according to your size. Alright and then once you feel that there's a snug tight seam uh, in distance making sure that there's not too much gap between the actual skin, the surface of your skin, and the actual uh, bib overall itself. Then what you'll actually do is you'll move on to the next step, which is the preparation of properly fitting on your coat. The coat goes over your bib overalls, which actually goes over your FR shirt and your FR jeans. Then what you'll do is you'll start at the bottom here, uh, and you'll just zip up the plastic zipper here because you definitely don't want any type of uh, uh, metal containing, uh, metallic containing zipper uh, because basically what will actually happen is if there's ever, if you're ever in an arc flash, which uh, we hope and pray that you're never in an arc flash, uh, you don't necessarily want uh, the actual arc flash starting here at the actual uh, metal zipper. It's metal conductive. You don't necessarily in the NFPA 70 states that uh, the actual suits aren't to be uh, manufactured with metallic uh, conductive uh, actual material, which some suits do actually manufacture them, but with this particular suit, the Oberon Arc 40, uh, Arc Series, uh, does not. Uh, and then you'll proceed to zip that up here, and then you'll start at the very bottom with the Velcro, and you want to snap it till you completely are covering your neck. And then the next thing you'll actually do is we have the Balaclava. Uh, the Balaclava sock hood some people call it the sock hood. It's an FR treated, uh, which basically means that uh, the actual the fabric, the thread itself, has actually been is partially dipped. Uh, majority uh, of it is inherently FR. Uh, the sock hood goes right on top of the actual coat itself. And you want to make sure that the balaclava sock hood uh, is covering the neck completely because we all know that the NFPA 70E states that anything above a hazardous risk, if you're working in a hazardous risk category 3, uh, 12, above 12 calories, I'm sorry, if you're working above 12 calories uh, per centimeter squared, which is the ATPV, which is also the arc thermal performance value, that you're actually required to wear the balaclava sock hood. The balaclava sock hood goes right above the jacket, and then you have your earplugs that you'll actually put in, which is your hearing protection, once you have those in, and then you have your safety goggles. Your safety goggles have to meet uh, the ASTM standards uh, regarding the surface of the actual safety goggles and so forth. Then you'll put those directly over the balaclava here. Make sure that they're securely fit. And then you have your face shield. Uh, the face shield you have the, uh, the ARC series, once again, uh, it's a 40 cal face shield uh, with the visual light transmission. Uh, and as you can actually see, this is the, uh, the anti-fog scratch resistant face shield. So what you'll actually do is you'll adjust the hard cap, which is actually on the inside of the hood itself. You'll adjust that so that it's facing forward properly. And then you'll place, place on your hard cap. Now, as you'll actually notice, before I completely put it on, that it actually has a hole in the rear of the flash head itself, which basically allows for 
uh, the tubing of a hood ventilation system along with the pocket mount. Uh, it comes in two different uh, types. Uh, you have two different types of fittings. You can actually have the, the hood pocket mount, which actually the battery uh, air ventilation fan pocket actually sits here within this pocket here, and the hose runs through the topping uh, remains of the actual hood, which ventilates the actual system, especially if you're working in this suit for over you know an hour. It, it, it tends to get a little warm, tends to get a little hot, so I usually recommend uh, definitely looking into possibly a, a hood ventilation system. There's also another choice if it tends to be a little bit of, uh, a little somewhat noisy, which the fan is it runs off of eight AA batteries, not necessarily uh, that loud, but there's a preference. If if you would prefer to have it on your on your on your waist, you can actually have uh, the, the the type the standard, which actually allows you to put it on your waist. It's, it's we call it the belt mounted uh, hood ventilation system. So once again, you'll actually put the hood on. You want to make sure that you're properly fitted and that you're comfortable. It sits right on top of the balaclava. And then you want to make sure that it's completely covered and that it comes down below your shoulders in the rear. It should cover your shoulders. It should cover your neck. It should cover somewhat of your chest here up front. And as you notice, as I'm breathing on directly onto the face shield, you'll see that there's, there's a somewhat of a humidity, somewhat of a foggy. That's because this is a brand new face shield and the face shield itself, in order to activate the actual screen, you have to breathe directly on it. The humidity is what actually op, um, activates the anti-fog properties of the face shield. Once you breathe on it and the, and the face shield is actually activated, you won't see this fog anymore. So the next thing that you'll actually have to do is you'll have to put on your, your rubber glove. Your rubber gloves go directly over your jacket, and then you have your leather protectors. And your leather protectors fit directly over your insulated rubber glove. And that is the complete and accurate way of properly suiting the guy uh, or sizing uh, of the Arc Slash suit. This is the Arc 40 series, which is the Nomex fabric. Now, there's two types of fabrics we carry. We carry the Nomex, which is an inherently FR, which is a monocrylic blend, and we also carry the uh, Proterra by DuPont, which also manufactures Nomex fabric, which is also an inherently FR uh, type of material. So when taking off the actual Arc Flash suit, uh, the first thing that we actually recommend is starting with your gloves. Sometimes they tend to be somewhat moist uh, underneath the actual glove, uh, which there, there are other properties, other uh, types of items that they carry out there that will allow you to take some of that moisture uh, out of the actual glove itself. Uh, there's there's two that I can think of that comes to mind. Uh, you have there's some glove talc powder that sometimes you can pour in there and that keeps some of the humidity, some of the moisture, uh, especially when your hands tend to get a lot a little sweaty. Or or you can always even look into the 100% uh, cotton glove liners. The cotton glove liners fit directly over your hand like a mitten. Uh, you stick those right into your rubber gloves there, and you're good to go. When taking off your rubber gloves, you can take them off uh, with the protectors on top of the insulated rubber gloves, or you can take them off by taking off the Lyman's protectors first. And then by taking off the rubber glove. And in order to keep, to keep them uh, safe and, 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 and allow them to uh, pass the testing, especially when, when the rubber gloves need to be tested on a six-month cycle. As soon as they go into production, as soon as they go into production, they start, um, they start to eat away. And so I really recommend looking into a testing lab uh, that you can switch. You can have a switching uh, inventory stock that basically what you do is uh, you, you take uh, uh, two pair of gloves, you send one to the testing facility to have it tested, at that particular point, as soon as it comes back, you take that one and put that one into production, whether it be manufacturing, whether it be working on the utility lines, uh, whether it be operating on switch gear. You take that one, put that one in. Those are the actual ones that you start to use. The other ones you take and you, and you put those to the side. So at the, at the point where the glove that you're currently wearing uh, comes around to the time that it needs to be tested once again, you send the other ones in. That allows you to always have some gloves on hand. So what you'll actually do is you'll take these gloves, 
you put these directly into uh, one of the canvas storage bags, which is actually provided by the manufacturer. We just happen to have the Salisbury uh, canvas storage bag here. You'll make sure you'll take these both. You'll place these directly into the canvas storage bag, making sure that there's not any bends or bruises on the actual glove. And then what you do is you just, some have a dual safety snap, some have a single safety snap. You tend to button those up. And then these here are good for storage. Next you can start with your safety hood. You start by taking off the safety hood and the safety goggles. And what I recommend with the safety hoods is just so that they don't damage. Um, I usually recommend folding the chest area of the safety hood uh, right on top of the actual face shield here that keeps the sun um, out of it depending on where you're, you plan the storage. And then you can just basically just tuck that in here. And then this fits directly into your safety kit bag. Usually a big orange bag. Some are yellow, some are blue. Uh, fantastic. As long as you have a safety kit bag, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it's a very... Um, advantageous unit to have, especially for storing your safety items. And then you'll go, you'll start by the balaclava, taking off the balaclava. And as you can see, I'm starting to sweat a little bit. So you may want to look into a hood ventilation system, uh, most definitely, because it was probably about 20 minutes, uh, and I'm starting to sweat a little bit. So it does get a little warmer. Uh, the benefit of having a green suit uh, when working above 40 calories is that it doesn't tend to get as warm, uh, to become as warm as some of the navy blue suits, some of the darker uh, the darker gray, the darker blues, uh, it, it tends to allow the heat to rise uh, somewhat, but always look into those hood ventilation systems. Then you run on the Velcro your strap. You want to take uh, taking the jacket on and off is that simple. You're zipping up, unzipping, taking off your Velcro, and the jacket comes right off. And then what you'll have is, last but not least, if you have, you have your, your bib overalls, which actually comes in the, in the complete uh, kit, uh, whether it be the coveralls uh, or the coat and bib overall style. The bib overalls are only with the coat and bib overall style, and then you have the coverall style. The only difference would be that there's not any uh, suspenders here. You would actually step directly into the suit. It's more of a one-piece suit, uh, which tends to be more of a preference. Uh, some people prefer to step directly into the one-piece suit over their, their daily wear clothing. Uh, some actually uh, pretend to like to have uh, the, the undershirts and so forth. And as you can actually notice, what you would actually uh, be preferred to wear, I tend to prefer, uh, are the long sleeve t-shirts. You definitely want to look into an FR long sleeve t-shirt. But for this demonstration, I'm going to be wearing the short sleeve. Now if you're working uh, within an industry where you possibly uh, may have um, got some chemical base, uh, some type of uh, chemicals, on the actual suit. The washing instructions for these particular clothing and this fabric is, is very, very easy. Um, with this particular suit here, uh, it's, it's just strictly more of a, uh, you're going to be washing it here within a, uh, with mild, a mild temperature, uh, with mild detergent. Uh, and you just basically want to just ensure that there's, there's no grease here. Uh, but you definitely don't want to use any type of detergents that contain chlorine, bleach, uh, or even uh, natural bleach, which is, for other words, is hydrogen peroxide. Um, and then what you want to do is, we highly, highly recommend that you do not, you do not want to hang these on a wire. You want to tumble dry on very, very low heat, um, and that's just based on the fact of the type of fabric. That's the actual washing uh, uh, instructions. So I would really, really highly recommend, and some may even have the question is, if I, if I tend to get my face shield dirty, how hard is it to wash it? Very, very simple. Can't, be any, can't become any more simpler than this. You basically want to talk, take a soft cloth or rag, and you just want to wipe across the interior of the face shield uh, with water. Uh, and basically on the interior, uh, you would actually do the exact same process, but you want to verify, you want to make sure that you're not using any type of chlorine bleach once again, and do not use Windex on the interior of the actual face shield. 
I hope I've been somewhat of a help to a lot of you all out there that's had those questions. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call, 760-444-0032. Thank you for channeling in the Texo Instruments. You enjoy your day.